My name is Peg Maas, and I'm a physical therapist here at Swedish Medical Center. The purpose of this podcast is to help you understand what lymphedema is, how it is managed, and some things you can do to reduce your chances of developing it. Lymphedema is a condition that is commonly discussed in the course of care for women who have been treated for breast cancer. It is not unique to this population, and it is not caused by the cancer itself. Anyone with insufficient lymph transport abilities, either because we were born that way or because we've been through medical procedures that compromise them, is at risk for lymphedema. The way cancer is treated, the radiation and surgeries, puts women with breast cancer more at risk for developing lymphedema. Lymphedema is easy to understand if you think of it in terms of a traffic control issue. It's essentially the result of impaired transport of the contents of the lymphatic vessels. To understand what we mean by this, let me start by giving you a sense of the important anatomy. Our heart pumps blood away from itself through the arteries. The arteries closest to the heart are large and the blood starts there and then the vessels get smaller and smaller as you go further from the heart. Eventually the tiniest arteries meet up with the very tiny veins and the blood travels through progressively larger and larger veins until it arrives back at the heart after passing through the lungs to pick up more oxygen. This system is a bit leaky by design. White blood cells can escape so they can do their cleanup duty in the body and then they re-enter the system. If they get too full or engorged though, they can't re-enter the blood vessels. That's where the lymphatic system comes in. The lymphatic system is a network of vessels into which the engorged white blood cells can easily enter. The vessels of the lymphatic system transport the body's cellular waste and along the lymphatic pathways there are nodes which act like colanders straining out the big particles. There are cells within the nodes that break down the clumps and so what leaves the nodes is a cleaner version of what came in. Eventually the lymphatic vessels meet back up with the heart and the fluid re-enters the bloodstream. There are a couple of fascinating things to know about the lymphatic system. One is that it has its own pulse, independent of the heartbeat. The vessels gently contract and relax to move the material through them. This will be something to keep in mind when we talk about treatment of lymphedema. The second unusual thing about the lymphatic system is that it has the capability to remodel itself in response to injury. When nodes are removed or damaged, as may be the case during breast surgery or radiation. The vessels that lead to them can create new pathways and connect up with vessels that have intact nodes. This is great news in the case of people who have had nodes surgically removed or damaged by radiation. The special massage techniques used in lymphedema care specifically help to regenerate the vessels. Now let's talk about how lymphedema occurs. Lymphedema occurs when the fluid traveling up through the lymphatic vessels gets trapped because of insufficient pathways. It's similar to when our local highways get overloaded with traffic. The fluid stops, backs up, and then just as cars on the highway may exit and spill over into the surface streets, the fluid seeps out into the nearby tissues causing swelling. The fluid that travels in the lymphatic vessels is very high in protein. Protein likes to make matrixes. If you think of what happens to egg whites, they are runny until you expose them to heat, and then they begin to become more solid. That's a matrix forming. The protein in our tissues forms matrices and firms up in the same way if it is allowed to stay still. In difficult lymphedema scenarios, the hardening of the tissues impairs adequate circulation, and the tissue is not able to heal itself or clear out infections. Not everyone who has surgery that involves the nodes will develop lymphedema. Most people will not. It turns out that we cannot predict accurately that those who have had more nodes removed will have lymphedema. Part of the issue is not how many nodes you had removed, but what percentage of your total number of nodes is removed. And that is not identified when surgical choices are made. The number of lymph nodes a woman may have in her underarm area ranges from 6 to 125. So the news of how many were removed is not a piece of data to worry about. The list of risk factors besides the surgical removal or damage to nodes includes radiation treatment, failure to regain shoulder movement, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. Additionally, lymphedema may be triggered by sunburn, bug bites, or other trauma to the limb. 
When lymphedema occurs, it is usually recognizable by swelling, especially in the hand or forearm. Some people feel a heaviness or a dull aching in their limb. This is not an emergency, unless it's also accompanied by redness, fever, or any other signs of being ill. Even though it's not an emergency, promptly informing your healthcare provider will make it easier to address and begin to manage the situation. Please understand this. Lymphedema is not a sign of cancer. It is the result of the treatments we currently use for eliminating cancer. How is lymphedema treated? People who treat lymphedema have had special training in how to evaluate and treat the condition. Currently, there is no nationally recognized certification process, though many institutes that train therapists issue a certificate. The people who might market themselves as lymphedema therapists are physical therapists, occupational therapists, and occasionally massage therapists. Massage therapists are generally not covered by insurance for treating this diagnosis, and they are not licensed to assess for a range of motion deficits or give any exercise prescriptions. When it comes to arm and torso lymphedema, physical therapists and occupational therapists have overlapping skills and training. Whom you choose to see may depend partly on your insurance benefit for one discipline or the other, and whom you have access to. At Swedish Medical Center, our team of lymphedema therapists includes both physical and occupational therapists. A visit to a lymphedema therapist includes a thorough discussion of your history, including your exercise habits, past orthopedic injuries, recent surgeries and treatments, and what your lifestyle's like in terms of hobbies, job activities, and other elements. We assess the movement of the limb, feel for and measure swelling, and check the healing of the surgical incision. Depending on what we find, we may teach a patient how to care for herself independently, or we may recommend treatment in the clinic. Sometimes treatment in the clinic means just a few visits, and sometimes it means a few visits per week for several weeks. We work with the patient to figure out what her goals are and what it will take to achieve them. The three major elements of lymphedema treatment are lymphatic drainage massage, compression, and exercise. The massage is a unique method that's different from what people are typically accustomed to. It's a very light technique, just deep enough to stretch the skin. It's not deep like Swedish massage, and it's not painful at all. The technique is performed rhythmically to support the natural rhythmic function of the lymphatic system. Strokes are performed in a very structured order, beginning on the torso and ending on the arm and hand. Therapists can teach you to perform a version of this yourself as a home program. In this podcast, you'll learn some basic elements of this. The role of massage is to mobilize the lymphatic system to move the fluid and also to promote the development of new lymphatic connections. Blocked vessels can actually form new cross connections and may then be able to transport fluids unimpeded. The effect of the massage will be enhanced by compression, which in essence creates an environment that is less able to accommodate extra fluid. People with lymphedema are generally encouraged to wear sleeves that provide some pressure on the tissue, sort of like a girdle. There's a wide variety of products and levels of compression. The choices of compression garments are best made with the advice of the therapist who evaluates you. There are also electric pumps that patients can purchase, which are designed to perform compression and massage. Determining whether to obtain one should be done with the advice of a physical or occupational therapist with lymphedema expertise. The other essential component of treatment is exercise. Regaining full motion in your shoulder and normalizing your posture helps your lymphatic flow. Cardiovascular exercise also assists with lymphatic flow. Some women find that exercise creates a bit of swelling in their arm, and others find that it's a great tool to reduce swelling. Some women need to wear a compression garment for their exercise activities and others do not. Again, because of the individual scenarios, exercise choices are best made with the advice of a therapist and based on your particular evaluation findings and preferences. Can lymphedema be prevented? There are many questions about whether lymphedema can be prevented. At this time, we do not have definitive research to guide us with this. There's some indication that doing self-massage as taught by a therapist may reduce the chance of developing lymphedema by promoting good flow and connections for damaged vessels. Certainly, learning the precautions, such as avoiding sunburn and cuts, is likely to help prevent lymphatic problems. And research is revealing that keeping fit is a key part. 
We do not recommend wearing compression garments as a form of prevention. There is preliminary research to suggest that this may actually cause an adverse lymphatic response. Now I'm going to teach you a few strokes of lymphatic massage that are quite generic and suitable for all patients, and also a breathing technique that promotes healthy lymphatic function. Before we do that, though, I want to recap some of the most important points we have discussed. First, the appearance of lymphedema does not mean anything about the cancer. Second, lymphedema is not a life-threatening condition. And third, lymphedema can be successfully managed. There are many scary stories out there, but rest assured that if you address lymphedema promptly and with the correct information, it is very unlikely to cause you much trouble. Let's move into learning a breathing technique that is good for all of us, but especially those with lymphatic flow issues. We are designed to be able to breathe in two quite different ways. One way is with the diaphragm, which is a muscle attached to the bottom of the rib cage. When we breathe with our diaphragm, the belly expands on the in-breath and flattens on the out-breath. The second method is using the muscles of the neck and rib cage. Breathing this way makes the chest rise and fall. Take a moment to rest one of your hands on your abdomen and one on your chest. As you breathe, notice which hand moves more. Often the effects of stress and habits we develop over time transform our daytime breathing into chest breathing. One value of di diaphragmatic breathing is that it massages some of the large vessels of the lymphatic system and promotes lymphatic transportation. Children and pets breathe with their diaphragm when they sleep. Observing them can help you learn how to breathe this way. Crying and laughing also promote lymphatic transportation because of the abdominal activity involved. Taking at least a few minutes every day to breathe in this deep abdominal way is something you can do to help your lymphatics function at their best. In addition to the breathing technique, there are two very basic lymphatic massage strokes that you can start to do. First, find the indentation behind your collarbone. Put the flat part of your fingers there and make small circles, pressing only with enough pressure to stretch the skin. Do five to ten repetitions. Second, apply the palm of your hand to your underarm area. This is best done directly on your skin and not through clothes. Create a large area of contact as if you were using a washcloth and making circular movements. Again, taking the skin as you make the circles, stretching it and releasing it as you circle, repeating five to ten times. These are just two of the steps of the self-massage of lymphatic drainage. The other steps for a complete program would be selected based on your assessment by a trained lymphedema therapist. You can begin doing those and it will support your lymphatic flow. If you want to learn a complete routine, ask your physician to refer you to a lymphedema therapist. Understanding the basics of lymphedema helps you make informed choices for your own care. There are many providers in the Swedish Medical Center system who can guide you. Take care.